Okay. Um, <clears throat> if I remember where we left off, we had talked about floating as a layout type. So what we'll do today is we'll finish that up. Um, we'll review it just in case you um, are rusty on it. And then we'll actually create a prototype using this. We'll then do two other layouts. Probably we'll get through them today. If not, we'll pick up on them on Thursday. Uh, using a grid layout and using a uh, flow box, what's called a flow box layout. And we'll take a look at those. The important thing to remember about this is use these, experiment with these. Remember we've seen in this example, and as you're doing your project, that it's very easy to take a single set of HTML pages and apply different CSS to them. And that's really a critical thing, that's an important thing. Because uh, our next topic after we talk about uh, these different CSS layouts is to talk about how to optimize a website for mobile devices. And we'll study one of the techniques that you can use to do that. So experiment. You know, I know everyone wants to get their assignments done, uh, but uh, consider the lab a place to work through and try these different examples and try different things until you get them right. Do uh, your, you know, try a couple, I think some of the assignments even call for you to do a couple different style sheets per page. And even if it doesn't, you can experiment with that. And with your prototype for your assignment, feel free to include a couple different versions of it with different CSS showcasing the different um, layout methods. Okay, so let's go, let's bring up the example that we left off with, spend a few minutes talking about it, and then moving to make a actual prototype using the float technique. we left off last time. And we were going over the flow layout, but sort of separate from the prototype. We were just looking at it, just a very bare bones example so that we could demonstrate it. And let's bring that up. We'll look at the CSS to make sure we're all on the same page. And then we'll continue along by making a prototype of this. All right. This one actually had a lot in it. This was sort of where we ended up the discussion. Let me go and change this. change the CSS and I will make the same style rule for content and news so that we can see how that all works. Actually. No, let me, I want to I wanna view this in a simpler form, so I'll get rid of these two guys. I think we can see what we want to see with just the first two sections. Okay. <clears throat> now, in this case, with the float layout, notice that they are side by side. All right. The reason for that is if we look at the CSS for these, both of these have a class of content. And we talked about classes last time, and classes are going to be very valuable in your CSS. Remember when you're defining a class, define it in such a way that you're not talking about physically how it's going to look. You're talking about what about it makes you want it to look special, 
or different than everything else. So in this case, this is the class isn't terribly descriptive. I just say content. This is a piece of content. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to process all the piece of contents this way. So like you wouldn't want the name to be like floating content because you might choose later on not to float this at all. So if you give deceptive names for your classes, then uh, that can cause confusion later on. Now, one thing to note is, again, a class is different than an ID in that a class can be applied to multiple HTML elements, and they all get the same style rule. So in this case, this has a class of content, this has a class of content, so both of those get this style rule dot content. I could actually put a preceding thing be, you know, here and say p dot content, then all paragraphs that have a class of content will get styled this way, and all the um, <coughs> links that have a class of content get styled a different way if I, ch if I chose to do that. But in this case, I'm just assigning everything with a class of content the same style rule. And that style rule is to make the width 45%, to give it a minimum width of 150 pixels, to give a margin of, uh, of 5 pixels, and to give a border of 2 pixels. All right? Now, I should probably add padding. Notice how with, you know, there's one thing I notice in a lot of people's assignment. It doesn't really look good when it's right up against the border. So add a little bit of padding in here. It doesn't have to be a lot. We'll just make it five pixels. All right. Makes it a lot more easy to read. Now, remember what this is saying. We're floating them to the left. We're floating both these to the left. So the first one is going to put in its spot. The second one, it's going to put it alongside of it. It's going to push it as far as to the left it can, provided it can fit it going across the width of the page, all right, the width of the window. Remember, when we define a width of 45% or if we define a width with pixels, we have to add on the other stuff to it. So this would be a margin of five pixels. So there would be a margin here of five pixels, here of five pixels, and here of five pixels. So that would be an extra 15 pixels. That would be an extra two, four, six, eight pixels taken up by border, and there would be an extra five, 10, 15, 20 pixels of padding. So you're not going to get, the point is, if you have anything other than zero for your margin, your border, your padding, you're not going to get 100% width, okay, because that adds on to it. Um, and the way floating works is, since these two can be put side by side, they will be. The minute this becomes smaller, where they cannot be put side by side, notice it's getting 45%, it's getting, 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 pretty soon, we can actually catch up and overtake it, in which case it drops it down below. That's what that's the, the idea of a floating layout, is that if there's space alongside of it, it will put it alongside of it. If not, it won't. You can float to the right or float to the left. So if I floated to the right, it would reverse these. All right? So if there's space alongside of the thing to the left, it will shove that in in that place. If there becomes not enough space, then it won't. Okay. So the first example I gave, it was a little easier to see because I used an absolute pixel count. So we can actually do the math on this. All right, 600, uh, 615. Uh, 623, 663 pixels is going to be the breaking point for it now. Let me save it. So the window, it'll stay that big until the window gets smaller than 663, and then it drops it down below. Now, this is useful. This kind of technique is useful when you're dealing with uh, creating a single web design that you want to work on both a mobile and on a uh, desktop. Because 
typically a desktop design is going to be a little more uh, involved. You might have multiple columns in a desktop design. Whereas for mobile design, one column typically is the rule for most of those. Okay? And again, I can do it either percent. Percent, it works the same way, except the math is a little more difficult uh, to think of. All right. So let's go and let's take our prototype and make a... Is there any questions about floating here before I continue and make our prototype work with the float? All right. So let's go and let's copy our prototype. Notice again, all of these things, if I'm not mistaken, we have not touched the HTML at all. We've only done via CSS, all right, which shows just the different looks that we can get by only changing CSS. That was one version of the prototype. This is a different version of the prototype. This is a third version of the prototype. And so on. So. I'm actually going to copy this one because I kind of like that one. So let me pull up the, that's how it is now. I'm going to go and remove the style code from it. So I removed almost all the style code so that we have this. And now I'm gradually going to try to achieve a design similar to this design where we have a banner, navigation, content, and footer, but I'm going to do it via floating. All right. So, I'm going to start out by saying my header I want to be I cut out too much of the CSS. I did want a little bit of it. Take the body too. The header, I want to have a width of 100% and float it to the left. Now, we're soon going to see a characteristic of floating, and that is I floated one element but I didn't do anything with the other elements. All right, let's also give it a white background. HTML just for reference. And I'm going to float the nav to the left. 
going to give it a width of maybe only 20%. Notice by doing this, I don't have to like do the math of how many pixels over it's going to be. That gets to be kind of a pain. So I'm going to do a float left. I made it 20%, so there should be enough room uh, underneath it, underneath the header. All right, there it is. Let's also give it a background of white. All right, then we are going to have the section. We'll give it a width of 50%, which again, 50 plus 20%, that's 70%, so this should fit side by side. And I'll float it to the left. So there it is. Notice that that footer fits alongside of it because I haven't given any size to it. So if I make the floater or the footer again a width of 100%, then it will no longer be able to fit. And it drops below. All right, so um, this is the, the basics of this. Um, we would probably add some margins in to make this and padding and all that to make it look right. So let's, let's do that now. Um, I can put a padding of five pixels, margin five pixels. All right, that puts it there. Um, navigation, I could, let's get rid of the bullet points again. Bullet, yeah, bullet points again. I can do that by saying nav, ul, list style type, none. Um, you'll find that the things that you do a lot of, you'll remember. And the things that you don't do a lot of, you'll have to look up. All right? So we got rid of that. We could probably add a little more space to these guys. So let's give a margin of 10 pixels. Since I only gave one number, that's all four directions. Puts the, 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 the links over there. Section, let's do a margin and a padding. And the footer, let's do a padding. side of it. So the browser's default is actually defaulted. Oh no. I thought it was the, a the, line. The browser the browser's default is to if there's stuff that's not floated, it will put it in the flow wherever the float left off. Okay. Okay. Which is I, I know it's kind of confusing. <laughs> 
So like let's make let's make two of these things with no floats. And should never do this, but let's add a second footer. And is it footer like by default like a new inline or like it's it could be inline? It it is, but It is, and if you notice that, there is a space between them, all right? The reason that this one appears here is not, it's not treating it like a inline tag. It's starting the flow over right here, okay? And therefore, it flows down. So notice, you know, even if these are tiny, it'll float, they'll stack on top of each other because they're still block tags. That is very confusing, I recognize. So let's undo, and let's undo. And there we have it. Okay. As this gets smaller, that gets smaller. And notice at a certain point, we actually leak content out of there. So what we could do is we could give a minimum width associated with it. So let's go and let's make the minimum width on the nav. Maybe something like 100 pixels. And notice at a certain point, then that floats and collapses down. Now, that would not be a bad view on a mobile device, something like that. All right? But when we study mobile, we'll look ways to make it look even better. So that's the float in a nutshell. All right? Questions about that? The next one is grids, all right? And graphic designers love grids, right? Um, because grids are orderly, right? They're order. Everything's in its right place, you know, just in a neat little table. Any of you that may have done HTML a long time ago, you would use tables to achieve a grid layout. Now it it actually burns my tongue a little bit to say those words because you should never use tables to achieve a layout. That is like turn of the century web design practices. Not turn of the 21st century, turn of the 20th century. No, I'm just joking about that. Uh, but this is an old, old, old technique that uh, is not good. But the grid CSS sort of is a nice way for designers to achieve that. I'm going to make a prototype uh, using the grid layout, and then I will probably uh, add some stuff to the prototype because you really can't see the grid layout really well with just a couple elements. So I'll add some other elements in there to make it look better. And you all know what I mean by a grid, right? A grid is where you have rows and columns, like a window pane. And the, the, the rows, uh, each row, the, the, the cells in each row have the same height, and the row, the columns in each row, the columns each have the same width. So rows the same height, columns the same width. Right. So let's go, and I have to be honest, this is one I have to look up, because I haven't done tons of this. So I'll have to refresh my memory. I don't mind saying that. The stuff that you do all the time, you know, you're going to know, and you're going to be able to do that off the top of your head. Other stuff, well, if you remember there's such a thing as a grid layout, you can always look up how to do it, right? If you've never heard of a grid layout, then you're at a disadvantage, and you might not know that it might be appropriate for your particular project. So let's make our 
next prototype and we'll play with this a little bit call this prototype 6 about CSS grids. There's a video tutorial and all that. Let's go to the second one. Finding a grid. I'm going to go in here, I'm going to copy this code, and I'm going to put it in the CSS for the body. Because grids live inside of containers. All right. What I'm going to say is I want to make this page I want the body of this page to contain a grid. For example, your body could have a flow layout, then inside one area you could have a grid. So in that case, that would be your grid container. All right? But in this case, I want to make the whole page a grid. All right? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say this. Grid templates column. So the display is grid for the uh, whole body of the page. The grid column is going to be 100 px on 100 px. So each of the two columns are going to be 100 px wide. Let's make that 300. And a grid gap of 100. Or I'm sorry, 10 pixels. And let me go and put on the header. nav, section, and footer, a background of white. 
So, if I do that, then I view this, absolutely nothing happens. There we go. There's a, okay. This is a rare case of there being an issue with Chrome. I don't know why that is. Um, let me try this and see if it fixes it. All right. I'm going to try putting in, I'm going to make a change of the HTML. to have a main. I'm wondering if Chrome does not like the grid being defined on the body level and instead being defined on something else. So let's go in and try that. So notice what I have. I defined in my CSS a grid, and I said there's two grid columns. There is, uh, and they're each 300 pixels wide, and there's a gap of 10 pixels between them. So it made the, each of these 300 pixels wide, all right, and their height is going to be the height of the biggest or the tallest thing in the grid, okay? So, I give a width and it will make the height match the tallest one. So, for example, this is bigger than the footer, so it made the size of this row, the height of this row, the size of this one, okay? Now, if I change this, if I were to, for example, add that, it's going to give me three columns, first, second, it's going to bring that one up there, and it's going to make the footer over there. So, now each of those are the height of that one, and the footer is small. And we'll play around. We'll when I'll change. Uh, I'll come up with another example where we we go crazy with this. Now, a lot of times you don't really want a true grid, right? True Grid was a movie with Jeff Bridges and earlier John Wayne, right? No, that was True Grid. I'm sorry. Um, you might want a grid where a a column spans a couple of columns. 
I might want this banner to go across all the way, for example, and have the navigation here, the content here, and have the footer go all the way across. You can do that by specifying how far the column spans. So, their examples aren't working either. There we go, CSS. So what I can do is I can say This gets to be a little confusing. I can say that I want the header to actually go across two cells of the grid. And I do that by saying grid column one slash three. Now this doesn't really make sense, right? I said one through three. It's actually going over columns one and two. Don't blame me. I didn't write this. Okay. Just know that the, the last column is one higher than what you might think it should be. So if I want that header to go over columns one and two of the grid, I do one slash three. Well, now that I do this, I can make my navigation a little narrower. So I could put in my template column, maybe 100 pixels and 500 pixels. And I get that. Or maybe I can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. So for the grid column, would you do 1 slash 4 if you wanted it to go across the page? Or to keep going far well, across? Uh, well, we'll look at that in a second. All right, we'll look at that in a second. This is this first example is using fixed lengths. So we specify the lengths, all right? Now, I could do a similar thing for the footer. There I have a better size between the nav and the footer or the nav and that and I could do the same thing on the footer to make it go across the bottom of the page. So it goes like that. And then again, I could add a margin to things. And relatively easy, we have a pretty clean looking layout. All right. Now, if you wanted to go all the way across, you could replace those with percentages. So let's make like, I don't know, 20% and 80%. And it goes all the way across. You don't have sort of that problem of the float. Uh, you do have that problem of it getting too small. Suppose we could put a minimum width to correct that in there. <coughs> 
gap again could be a number of percent. I think if you also put a minimum width on this. I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not entirely sure what you'd do to fix that. Um, you could play around with that and see how that could be addressed. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure on that. You could probably, I'm thinking if we, I don't know. You'd have to look at the, the attributes associated with the grid layout and see if there's anything you can do to keep those from bleeding into the other. grid lines. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you run into that kind of issue, we can take a look at it and you can check out some of those other uh, resources as well. Um, okay. Thing is, I don't want that to go in there. Yeah, I don't have a good answer off the top of my head for that. I'm not really sure the workaround for that issue. Um, if you again, if you run into it, well, we'll we can take a look and and see uh, how to solve that. I don't know the the answer to that one off the top of my head. If you view these again, I'm not really sure why Chrome is having difficulty with this. Oh, yeah? Okay. Ooh. That's kind of bad because you can't guarantee people are going to do that. Um, it worked for me uh, when I followed the W3 school. Mm -hmm. Dread layout. Right. It just worked. Okay. Interesting. This page has a couple more examples where we have a grid, a two by two grid. That's essentially what we did. Or I made the template columns that and each of the boxes get fit there. Uh, this one you can actually control the order of the things. So the way mine worked, it put the first one in that position of the grid, the second one in the second position, and so on down the line. You can actually rearrange it if you want your order to be different. That's very powerful because, again, you shouldn't have to depend on the CSS or the HTML being a certain way. You should be able to display it the way you want to. So the grid gives you a control uh, to rearrange the elements uh, on your page to the way you want them to be and not just the range of the HTML. Uh, here's one where you can uh, have things go across. multiple columns, which I saw, again, notice we said for that one, grid column one through three. We can also do it going rows. Notice that goes over rows one through one slash three. Um, 
And there's other things as well. Let's see. I think it's going to be stacked. Let's look at that. That might have been what we're what we're dealing with. Put a Z index of the nav so the nav stays on top. Yeah, that's what they're suggesting. Okay. So, in other words, the real problem is that the content goes over the header. So, I could do Z index. Um, Now when it overlaps, the, the nav stays on top of it. The one thing you got to remember is that you can't control for everything that someone's doing with their browser window. So if they make it really small just to try to break your design, well, they get a cookie then. All right, they did it. All right. But we could do something like we can keep the nav on top. And that at least uh, allows the page to still be functional. And if they block some of the content by doing it, it's funny because in my 232 class, we're using jQuery to like reposition stuff on the page, allow people to drag and drop, and like you can really do some messed up stuff with that. And it's like, well, if you put it in the hands of the user, then then it's sort of their responsibility if it becomes unreadable. Same thing here. Uh, I do like the fact that with the Z index, you can put it on top. So that seems to be the solution that that I would do with this. I'm not sure if there is another solution, but that's one that works pretty well. Okay. Um, Next class, we will talk about the flow layout. We'll talk about browser compatibility. And we might get into uh, mobile, um, optimizing for mobile uh, sites. All right. That's all I had. Does anyone have a thumb drive that I can borrow for the walk from here to the lab?